Welcome to another installment of the Final Scoop Podcast. My name is Robert Chnetsky, the Supplement Engineer. Joining me as always is my international band of brothers, Lucas Rakowski, Prometheus Intelligence, Sports Technology, Shane Babyface Smith, Stack.com, and Robert Samborski, Apollo Nutrition. My friends, thank you as always for joining me. We appreciate that you making a sacrifice each week for the listeners tuning in on the live stream. Thank you for joining us as always. Post up any comments, questions, queries, quick, smart aleck remarks you have for us. We'll get to anything and everything over the course of the next two hours that we're on. And uh, Robbie, I got to say, man, you are looking much more uh, youthful and happier than usual. You're not all pissed off looking. What's going on, my man? Yeah, well, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was on point. That was amazing. And for all the oh, listeners that have no idea, the people that aren't actually watching and they, uh, for the people that don't know what's going on, uh, Robbie decided to be a little bitch again this weekend. His pink Okami bastard ass is not on the podcast. He's got something more important to do, some kind of party or some, I don't know, something. Forget him. We got Sean Chance of Sub Talk Radio here with us this week. Sean, thank you for filling in. We appreciate thank it, sir. Thank you, guys. Big shoes to fill, and I appreciate it. Do my best. Uh, Robbie's a short little feisty Russian. He's not that big. He's not like Drago size. He's just, he's, he's average size. You know, we, we could take him. If all four of us ganged up together, we could handle him. You're a full of pennies. <laughs> so I guess, Sean, it's been a while since we've had you on the show. What's, uh, catch us up on what's new with you and, uh, your life and sub talk radio. So it's been busy. I mean, I've been trying to, uh, my, 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 trying to mimic you guys a little bit. I mean, you guys are having a great podcast with multiple people and I'm kind of mimicking you guys a little bit, having some different people and uh, just trying to come out with content like you guys are. I mean, you guys are my idols. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> you're in a bad life situation if we're your idols. Bro. <laughs> it's a low bar. It's a low bar. <laughs> that's, that's true. Well, this is the supplement industry after all. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not. I, I say we're changing lives. Shane says, no, we're not. No, we're not. Not even close. Uh, I mean, we we might be affecting a few, but we're not changing like lives, maybe we're not taking lives for sure. Yeah, we are crushing we lives. Be... So, guys, today I have the stop watch going. I want to see how quick we can get the podcast off the rails. Whew, I feel like we already had that. Oh, wait, this is <laughs> we're off the rails already. Alexander <laughs> from Yummy Sports. He and I had a we were talking on the phone earlier this week. Uh, it was all Thursday, actually. We had a really good conversation, and oh, uh. Fine. Yeah, Team Butterfly with with Lucas. I still I don't get that inside reference yet. Maybe one day I will. And Alex, Alex and I were talking. I said, "Dude, this is surreal. I can't believe I'm talking." I said, "Huh? What are you talking? About? I'm just like this big eyed nerdy guy that talks about supplements." <laughs> but it, it just kind of it reminded me. And I told Alex the same thing. We were on the phone. I've had people ask us before, like, "What's the most awkward fan meetup you've had at an expo or something?" And I'm thinking, I don't know if I've really had one. I guess. I mean, like I met a few people at the Apollo Expo when they they had that a couple years back, but at the uh, the Arnold or Olympia or anything like that, it's it's been pretty low key. There hasn't been any like stalkers or anything yet. So as long as I, as long as I don't have any of those kind of situations, I, I think I'm, I'm winning. It's humbling because when I went to Apollo a couple of weeks ago, I was in the in the little shop there, and mm -hmm. Carolina was there doing inventory, and Robert walks in and goes, "Carolina, do you know who this is?" She's like, "I don't freaking know." She's like, "This is Sean from Sub Talk." And she's like, oh, hey, how you doing? I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, little fish here, guys, little fish. That's the same way I feel with everything, man. I'm, just, I'm like this little dude, little nerdy guy in the corner just writing and doing stuff like that. It's, it's the, Please don't ever elevate me to any kind of like industry authority, superstar, nothing like that. That's weird. That's weird to think those things. So yeah, like, right. in my mind, Shane is probably like the biggest star out of all of us because he's got the, yeah. like, the leading website in the uh, – for supplements and news and all of that stuff. He's doing really all get, the hard work. I yeah. don't really get that much, like, because people don't know me by face. And so when they, when someone, I've been at bars or like an expo and I'll be like, oh, hey, I'm Shane from Stacked. And they'll be like, oh, sorry. I'll be like, oh, okay, Stack 3D. Sorry, <laughs> you have to say it. And then someone across me will be like, you're Stacked? And I was like, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> You need to start introducing uh, yourself as Matt Damon. Matt Damon more often. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's it gets awkward, but I'm just like, yeah, yeah, and they're like, wow, so and so, love what you've been doing, blah blah blah, and yeah, yeah, man. But I don't, people don't know me by face, so it's not like they come up to me and be like, oh my god, it's you, because no one knows me. But then they just say, oh, okay. Would you? Well, prefer I could be fucking anyone. Prefer, like, would you prefer anonymity, or would you prefer to be like, hey? 
Here's my face. I'm Shane. Everybody should know me. The the, the work is more important than my face. Yeah, Agreed. exactly. But Shane, did they ever say, oh, I pictured you bigger, smaller, different, whatever? Or is it just, oh, you're it's Shane. It's the other okay. way. People always say, you're bigger than I thought. <laughs> Everyone says That's that. But then I don't know what that's been to mean. <laughs> I, I guess because mm-hmm. most brand owners, like the, the typical, pro- like, so we have bodybuilders out of the face of the company, but most of like the owners of supplement companies aren't really that, that builder, yeah. like that muscle. I mean, that's kind of changed. I'm like, you, you've got Robbie who obviously lifts, Dan at Ghost, Chris Waldrum, yeah. uh, you know, so on and so forth. Mark Glazier at Nutribio, like all these people, they're very physically fit. They might not be as in front of they are, but I mean, if you go look at like Jared Wheat at high tech, the, you, your boy doesn't lift um and, you know the, the same can probably be said for a lot of other things so it's just it's uh it, i think that's maybe what's kind of shocking i don't think it's, I, see, I, don't, I don't think it's that shocking especially when you meet like some of the big motherfuckers yeah like i've seen some guys and i'm just like man like people would think i don't lift <laughs> that would make me feel bad yeah it's uh i met uh alan heroic muscle at the Apollo thing, I mean, and he took us through a back workout, me and the review bros and him, and uh, Eddie from Muscle Players was there too, and I was definitely the the, the low man on the totem pole, like the little skinny mini dude walking around, and I know I'm not big, I have no illusions of grandeur about being this big swole guy or anything, but it's just, what? you realize how kind of small you are when you're like next to some of those bigger dudes, and Robbie too. He was deceiving. Alan, yeah. Alan I did not expect, because Alan's probably 6'4", like 250, 260, easy. He's a big one. A super nice yeah. guy. Super nice guy. I've heard he's. I've heard he's like a large individual. How 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 much you weigh? Like he's got to be two fifty, two sixty easy, and yeah, like probably six four, six four, six five maybe. That's what yeah. I thought. He, he's he's a big and he's strong man. He definitely is. Uh, creamy. We haven't seen creamy live on the show in a while. So here, should I answer? Yes, please. Yeah, every time we have a question directed to Robbie, post that up. I was going to ask Robbie, but would you guys consider the new Kumite that is coming out a lower stim daily driver? I know the formula is not out, but with the focus on performance, it came to mind. Let's first get off. Let's discuss what in the world a daily driver is, because I'm not quite familiar with that term. Or we're like, let's I guess define what it should be, or what what do you classify as a daily driver? I think most people are looking at like 300 megs of calf or stims or less. That's what I, that's what I kind of hear amongst all the different reviewers and stuff. Okay. You see, because from what I understood from Lucas and a few other people and TJ, a daily driver is what I assume something like you would use on like a light day or if you were just wanting something average and yeah. then you would use the intense stuff on like that's what I have understood it as. I I, w- I would say I have never structured a pre-workout like that. I sort of do it in, if I'm working strength, I want it, like, Kumite is performance endurance, like, kind of focus. Yeah. I would uh, just be running that every day, and then if I was going to do, like, a light day, like, arms, I mean, I might just do that, but add a, add a scoop of ghost pump or something. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't. I, I don't know. I've, I've never. Like each, I would never take a week pre workout. Not necessarily a week one, but like a a light, or a sub par one. Mm-hmm. I would prefer just to have that big one every day that I need to. And then I guess, kind of, I have my. I I always have pre workouts for the purpose of whatever I'm trying to do at the time. Yeah. Right now, it's trying to get strong. So, Kumite, I would just use. Fucking every day. So, would you class? Do you uh, rotate your pre-workouts based on like the level of sleep you had, or do you base it on the workout? Do you base it on how you're feeling energy on the wise, workout. or if it's volume or anything like that? On the workout. Okay, so even if you had a great night's sleep and you're not that tired, you would still take something like a 600 mg caffeine pre-workout. See, because my 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 argument is is the uh, like even if you're really tired. Mm-hmm. Like I still feel that the pre workout is going to take you to the same level. That's my theory. I've always just been like, look, if I'm tired or if I'm wide awake. Yeah. When I'm wide awake, it's not going to take me that much higher. But when I'm asleep, it's probably going to take me way the fuck up. That's okay. what I've always gone off. I've never noticed too much difference. 
when I'm in the in the thick of it working out to yeah. like oh I must have slept like yeah you'll feel tired and your performance might be a little bit less but yeah I've never noticed like a drastic change in feeling yeah yeah I think I, I look at it a little bit differently like I base mine on what what the training session is but also how do I feel like cognitively and physically going in like if I feel uh, I didn't sleep well and it's like an up an upper body day, so it's either a push or a pull workout um, I'm going to take something that's like 400, 500 megs of cat. Like I'm going to take Hypermax. I'm going to take the full serving of Hypermax or the full serving of Hooligan or Assassin. If it is uh, an upper body day, but I slept really great and I don't need that much, I'd probably do 300 caffeine and just that's it. And just stack it with a non-stim pump. Like have a cup of coffee and stack it with a non-stim pump. Leg day, regardless if I'm feeling tired or not, I'm not putting any kind of yohim bean in there or a, most of the time, not even a bunch of exotic stims. It's going to be coffee or like, just some caffeine only pre-workout and probably just a half serving of like cool again. So it'd be 300 max 250 preferably or something like that. And that's going to be it because my heart rate, my motivation to train legs, even if I'm feeling like shit is going to be higher just because I, I have the natural proclivity to train legs more. Um, but I, that's kind of, it's, it's, that's interesting because I feel like the pre-workout if I'm feeling like crap and I take a strong pre-workout, it's going to get me up to where I want to be. If I don't have a lot of sleep to where if I take, if I've had a lot of sleep, I don't need a lot of stimulants, so I'm not going to take it. Even if it's if it's a harder workout, I'm not going to take that mega pre workout. Yeah, I want the max. If I'm a, <laughs> if I have good sleep, I always usually have good sleep, and then I yeah. take the, the max pre workout, and then you know that I'm going to get as far as I can. That's the yeah. goal. I don't. I feel like uh, I don't know the daily driver thing. I think I don't. I I understand it. I guess it would be like whenever if I were traveling and I needed a pre-workout, mm -hmm. that would be I guess a daily driver like an energy drink or an RTD or whatever the gym had. Yeah. But on a regular basis, I very rarely, I don't really have one that I'm like, oh, I just need to get me through, because I'm yeah. sort of just like I want to fuck shit up. Right. That's yeah. kind of always <laughs> the place. <laughs> A creamy's clarifying. So, for example, it's 5 p.m. and I don't want to take 400 plus caffeine. So, a daily driver would be 300 or around there, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. I mean, the the new Kumite. I think. I don't want to. I don't know if it's. Oh no! Ask Robbie first. I'm gonna just look it up on my phone right now because I know he sent me the formula before. See, my wife had this thing. She said she was she, she was gymming at um, around 6 7 p.m. and she's like, I don't want to pre-work it. And I was like, Look, man. This is how far I go, right? If it's fucking eight o'clock, I'll throw down hooligan. Okay, yeah, I may not sleep till one or two, but You're I'm gonna to fucking I'm gonna get the most I can out of my workout. Yeah, I waited all day for this shit. <laughs> okay, that's my theory. I'm with Shane. I, I, even in this situation where it's like, because I know some people go to sleep much earlier than me, and some people have trouble after they've had caffeine i kind of always just say fuck it <laughs> just just do what you gotta do i don't train that late though you know what i never understood the concept of like daily driver i i don't i don't get it it's like i mean, I mean you gotta like, you gotta get it you i mean i can understand it i yeah like, but you, like you know, what, lucas explained to, it to me in my opinion in my opinion you have you have to have uh, like uh you know low stim days and high stim days let's say okay so for example if you are like even on non-training days for example today is my non-training day i'm not training at the gym i'm just like doing my thing just do some cardio those kind of things so i just like gravitate on like 500 600 milligrams of caffeine per day and this basically is that's my it's my like yeah. moderate dosage dose per day but on the tomorrow will be legs so in the morning, I'm probably going to take like a scoop of like, I don't know, hooligan. I've got also unstoppable waiting. The first version, Shane. The first version. Bro, so, I got a tub. I got a tub. Scoop that. Bro, man, I got a tub waiting. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm excited as, as hell. I also think it's interesting that the measure of a daily driver is 300 milligrams like yeah but it's I've like had a, some because yeah, that's like what i sort of find interesting yeah no, like, that's what i'm saying yeah because like you can get a like uh, you could get um what's his name hypermax 
Uh, mm. I'm pretty sure it wasn't always as high as it is now, but you can get some pretty high stim intense pre-workouts at 300, 350. Yeah. So I guess it doesn't necessarily mean that if it's, I don't know, a daily driver or something that you don't want too intense, you can still get a pretty intense pre-workout at 300, 350. Maybe not so much these days comparatively to what's out there, but mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I understand the reason, but I just don't. I, 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 that's not my way of approaching it, I guess. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the new Kumite is going. It's 300 it or less. Three. Yeah. Pretty, yeah, it's 300 or less. It might be. It's somewhere between 250 and 300. I don't remember the exact numbers. I can't find the image that Robbie sent me in the in my, uh, one of our text threads. Yeah, but the benefits on that though, like let's say I was I had a deadlift day and I was going to shoot for three sets of ten, or and I was going to follow up with three sets of max ten on uh, on bent row right after that. Yeah. I would throw down Kumite because I want the best performance, but I don't think the caffeine is a reflection yeah. of how that's going to benefit me. But everything yeah. else that's in there is going to help me. So it's I may not get a good energy kick, but that would probably be one of the most best suited pre-workouts for what I was about to try and achieve that day. Yeah. Uh, another option, bit, Creamy, would yeah. be do a, a half serving of overtime with a full scoop of bare knuckle or some other stim-free pre-workout yeah. like FSU, Ghost Pump, yeah. uh, one-up stim-free pre-workout. Those are good. Ape Shit from Primeval is another good. I would say that. I would put that in the daily driver category. It's 264 caffeine. It's got some new himbean in it, choline, taurine, agmatine, that stuff. I like that one always hits well for me. I recently trained on MVP uh, Neuro, I believe it was. Really MVP? good. MVP? It's a Nova, right? Oh, MVP. Nova. Yeah. MVP. Nova. Yeah. Nova, Nova, Nova Farm, yeah. Yeah, that's 350 caffeine, I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's a good one. I'm trying to think. What are some other, like the, this is as much of a sellout as this is going to sound like regular C4. Like if you want 150 megs of caffeine and you just need a little something to get you going, I've always enjoyed like the mood elevation on uh c4 because it's probably got the l-dopa in there and some of the other stuff um but i've always worked well or you know an energy drink and uh a non-stem pre or just an energy drink depends on how hard you're planning to push for that afternoon training session or not i think some of it too is a lot of the bro science that people don't want to use a 400 mig dmha like every day so they're burning out their receptors so yeah. they figure okay if i stay at 300 i'm not going to burn anything out and i'll use the exotics you know, one, two, three days a week. Yeah. And that's what I usually agree with too. I don't think you should be doing like those mm -hmm. super, like blow your face off pre-workouts because they're not that you're going to burn your receptors out, but you are going to develop a tolerance to things like the DMHAs and the areogerensis, like those kind of exotic aggressive stems. I, I would say, save those for like the really, where like the, the balls to the walls workouts or the ones where you really need it or like the heavy deadlift day uh, or like you're trying to new set a, set a new PR on leg day or something like that or a max effort bench or something, something along those lines. Whereas uh, otherwise, if you're feeling pretty good like, and you've got really good sleep, your food's good, you're not cut, like in a super big deficit or something, that's when you can uh, maybe go with a lower stem pre-workout or if it's a nighttime evening workout or something like that. But use those. The uh, like, I'm not taking Assassin every day of the week. That's just not something I mean, to do. When, when I have Assassin or when I have Devastate or when I have Hypermax Unstoppable, I'm not going to lie. I take that every single fucking day. <laughs> maybe yeah. I'll do because I do three on one off repeat yeah. kind of thing. I, I'd do it all three. I don't do anything on my off day. And then maybe there'll be a session or two where I'm just like, eh, let's, let's, but that, I'm only saving it so I can use it at a later date because I don't, because I'm going to run out. Yeah. And, it, and, and it's going to be upsetting. That's the only reason I might like yeah. space it out. I guess you could put, uh, what, Ghost's Legend is 250 caffeine or 275? I guess that could be considered a daily driver, probably. Oh, you double that thing, man. <laughs> to 500? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was... I think, yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm thinking of the previous one, the previous one, the previous one, I think. This one, yeah, they, they upped the caffeine. But yeah. that's probably a good example, I think, based on what they were describing a daily driver as. Yeah. So, but Lucas, I, would I, a double I, I, impact yeah. or... Sorry, would, would a double impact or a hooligan be like your daily driver? Nah, man. That's, that's, a, a that's a that's a wake me up. That's a that's a, that's a morning coffee. Yeah, but, but seriously, like this this week was like a Christmas, man. I I opened the package from one of my uh, good friends. Mm -hmm. There were like two tops, black with the yellow envelopes. Oh man! 
bro, I was like, you can't explain the feeling, man. It's like, uh, that's like, if this is the not, OG, I mean, it's not going to do the same, OG, though. You just, you, just, you just can't beat this, this free. So uh, once I open it, felt the smell, the orange chain nose, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's, it's like. It's gonna be three years past expiration. Yeah, after after ten minutes, it just hits straight away. Ten minutes, man, and you can just like you're just in a different world. It's like it's like McDonald's. You know, yeah. it's good when it's uh, still good after expiration. <laughs> <laughs> do any of y'all know what Dunkaroos is? Oh yeah, you do. Wait, I'm not is that? Is that? Wait, is that? A, did you have that? I thought that was like a maybe an international thing. Is that an American thing too? I, I thought it was just like an American like junk food. Like we had when we were kids. So it's a bunch of those like the little shortbread cookies, and you had like a little thing of icing yeah. next to it. You dip it wait. in and you eat it. What were yeah. the What were the shapes of your biscuits? They were different ones. So like sometimes there was a circle with a D. Other times it was like I guess it was kangaroo parts or like a basketball or something. Had, like, yeah. See, shape. as far as I know, Dunkaroos are Australian. Yeah, I guess maybe it was started there. But I thought it, it went away like after we were kids. I thought it like went away when we were in high school. I found Not them today nice. at the store. I was walking through the store and I thought, "Fuck, I got to get these." I this is like a blast from the past from childhood. So I bought a box. I never eat that shit, but I, I thought I'm, I'm getting some just because. <laughs> you would eat like a box. Hmm? Those things are tiny. Yeah, it's, it's 190 it's... calories, like 38 grams of sugar, and two grams of fat. <laughs> Oh, maybe I mean, it's maybe pure icing and maybe cookies. the American ones are like extra extra large, of course. Make a shake um, and pour it all over yeah, with the protein yeah. shake. There you go. We will have like some crumbles on it. Pete, was Robic mean to you guys again? You gave him a timeout. Yes, he decided a housewarming party was more important than us, and he's going to be bailing next week too. So Robbie oh, might wait, just be permanently it, replaced. Is it, is it his house? I don't know if it is. I mean, I know he moved into a new house at last year. Maybe, uh, it maybe, is. It's, maybe it's for that. Because that's know. kind of important. Is it? Do you fortunately really for, party? If it's your fortunately first Fortunately for me, I don't have a. I don't do anything at uh, six in the morning. So the only thing that interrupts this is me sleeping. So maybe he's on a secret assignment. He could be. The KGB might have re recruited him again. <laughs> Shridhar, try to sass in V7 Tiger's Blood today. Tell Robbie that I love the experience. Flavor is way better than six and a half. I actually sipped this. Yeah. My yeah. man. It's good. Does the it taste assassin. good? Yeah, it's like Bomb Pop. Or the flavor I had was Bomb Pop. It's called Ninja's Carnage. Was I'd the flavor I'd be I disappointed. Everyone says this shit and then you drink it and you're like, this isn't. I didn't so try well. it. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just liking the comment that you sipped it. So. Is it the best tasting pre work? Does it taste like aminos? Oh, okay. like an amino Thank you. No, 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 no. But it's good tasting for as much shit as they got going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, when and you it's, say, like, oh, it, it tastes like bomb pop, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, based if you on had everything the, that's in uh, there. The bomb pop of Hypermax from Performax, that's a really solid bomb pop flavor. Um, uh, the Rocket Pop. I, I, remember, I remember I told Aaron about that when he said to me, I think it was the last version. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh man, we worked really hard on the flavor. And I'd be like, did you? Because. <laughs> well, like the orange mango and the, the raspberry lemonade, are, they're, they're, they're serviceable. The bomb pop, I actually, I really enjoy it. They so are. I like the rocket pop. They, some of them are pretty good. Like, yeah. I would say good as in maybe average. But when you get up to the likes of like a C4 and all those other ones, I'm like, okay. No comparison, man. No. Those things are really tasty. Yeah, man. Yeah. Although devastate the the yeah, what's the one that the State of the Union? Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. did a very good job. That thing tastes damn good. Really good. That's probably one of the best tasting best pre workouts I've had. Good deal. A blast from the past. I uh, opened uh, a tub of crimson from Devastate. Mm. Oh. Oh, wow. I still have a tub of that sneaking in the back of the pantry too. Bro, but this stuff just like. Uh, it's like two two years post expiration date. Uh -huh. Yeah, same thing. It's here. like, bro, you can you can take one scoop to uh to, to a shaker and it's like mixes like straight away, even without like mixing it up or anything like that. It's like disappears right away. 
Yeah. Maybe it's just dust. And, and the flavor is so smooth. Man, it's, it's Yeah, the dust. pineapple flavor they had, I remember being really good. Serious dust. Yeah. Huh. Sup's on deck. You guys need to have an intervention with Robbie on how he needs to take this podcast seriously. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be... We might just have a rotating fourth guest member permanently now. And just only allow Robbie once every three months to come back on the podcast. Shit's getting old. <laughs> and for, for all the listeners, feel free to give Robbie as much grief. Shoot him a, an email, a, a direct message, anything to let him know your disdain and disapproval of him not showing up today. For putting other people above your needs to listen to a podcast. No, Robbie, I'm not worth not worth watching. Yeah, that that's true. I would agree with that, Daddy. <laughs> it's the He's collective. Ratings. He's ratings. Yeah. Brooke, great to see you all. Great to see you too, Brooke. Uh, Pete, Power Rush and GDS are solid low caffeine pre workouts. I don't know what GDS is. Yeah, me too. In, in Pell Nutrition. Oh, get that's the, the name of those. Yes. PSD, get shit done. We'll get stuff done. Okay. All right. Yeah, they're, they're stim free pump pre workout solid. Sensor um, diversion. Yeah. Uh, what else is another? Uh, Enduraline by Nova Farm. That's more probably like a fat burning, thermogenic kind of pre cardio supplement. But I mean, if you're just looking for a low caffeine hit, just some energy, you could stack that with a pump, uh, stim free pump one as well. Uh, Sridhar. Tiger's blood flavor. I smell, taste the coconut and the strawberry notes. I guess, yeah, coconut, strawberry, cherry, or coconut, strawberry, watermelon. Are is Tiger's blood. I I've been telling Robbie to do a Tiger's blood flavor forever, and that motherfucker did not send me the Tiger's blood flavor. He sent By me the way, the ninja. Can anyone it. explain to me why they used coconut in the Tiger's blood flavor? That's what. It, that's just what. Uh, like, if you go and get like a shaved ice or a snowball, like we call them in New Orleans, a snowball. That flavor, Tiger's Blood, is just that's the combination of those three flavors: coconut, strawberry, and watermelon. That's just tigers, what it is. Tigers like eating coconuts. Yeah, they like that tropical <laughs> sensation. It's refreshing. I don't fucking know. I don't. I, I, don't just, ask these I, I just, I just don't understand this. I don't. I don't ask these questions anymore, Lucas. Yeah. If, if, if Americans say Tiger's Blood tastes like this, then okay. Have Goddamn it. right. So we listen to what Americans say. Yeah, man. Somewhat. Okay. Yeah. You make shit up and then just go with it. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, let's go with it's it. Go for it. Ooh, which reminds me, we tried the America Labs energy drinks today. Or what did you say? Loved them. Loved did them. Did you Did you like the previous one? I never tried the previous one. Oh, for fuck! <laughs> I loved it. Can't compare it to anything because I didn't have it before. Bro. Well, I just I had done all the Alani new drinks the week before. I like these more than the Alani new drinks. Does that count for something? See, because because we had this I had this discussion, there were people commenting on uh, Instagram, and Doug was uh, messaging, and I was saying it's not that I didn't like it, because it is good. I like you said it is good, but it is very different from the yeah. previous one. So like if you really 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 liked that previous one, mm -hmm. like if you liked everything that was in Transformers one, you're probably gonna yeah. hate the shit out of Transformers two. Right, so in, and I liked a lot of the things that made America Energy the original, like made what it is. So yeah. the the new version, it's not that it wasn't good. It's just that it wasn't, it didn't have the same highlights. So I didn't quite, I mean I liked it. Yeah. But I I didn't rank it up there as as much just because I liked the candy sweetness of the original and it was slightly less carbonated. Mm -hmm. So if you like those things, those have been switched up a bit on this one. So I think people, and people were saying that, someone was saying I didn't like the overcarbonation, and some people were saying they do. And so my point was that it is different. That's my key point. It's not that it's bad, it's just that if it's different, so I can see some people may not like the change, some people may. So I don't, it's a... It's, I didn't think these were overly carbonated. I mean, compared to something like a Bang or like a regular soda or something, I didn't think they were overly carbonated. I, I mean, the, the Victory, the cream soda one, man, that was... But the victory I actually liked. Spot I liked, liked the victory better than the last version. But it is if you had the original, mm -hmm. you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. But you didn't have the like as Shane said the first version because yeah, the first, fuck, man? the original the original was my like was my number one rated uh, energy drink so far. I didn't I, uh, I didn't try I didn't try the the new ones yet. It didn't came to uh, to uh, EU as you probably. 
can imagine we're gonna probably wait a year or maybe maybe another year i don't know but I uh if I go to the, the gnc or vitamin shop near me i've never been in there but i wonder if they still have some of the old stock america energy oh, I, I, I doubt it <laughs> you think maybe. you'd be hard pressed to find we'll that be hard, yeah okay Lucas, what was it for you though? Was it the flavoring, the carbonation, or what? What? What did you like more about the first first rendition? You know what the the first version was like. The carbonation was on point. It wasn't like too carbonate too carbonated, and uh, I think that the flavor was super smooth. Basically, every flavor that they had knocked out of the park. And okay. once I uh, talked to Shane and uh, saw his review, he said that it was like a different experience. So I was like. Mm. I'm a, it's I'm a bit good. Disappointed. Yeah, he it's, said he's it's, it's good, so I trust him. But at the same time, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know. Again, but it's kind of like how Rob, Robert went in not trying the original and he liked it. Yeah. And I can see that. Like, if you're someone who didn't try the original, you might not. It's because I had that kind of already that history where I liked this specific balance of carbonation and flavor. Yeah. going in it was a little bit off so it kind of caught me off guard but then if you like more carbonation you might like it it's like it's up to you i guess but i could see people say, saying i don't like the change and i like the change i could yeah. see people going either way the uh the little write-ups they did on the cans and in the little box yeah. like the sample box <laughs> genius man as as a game-changing industry-leading author myself the uh <laughs> The the product copy that they wrote on that was fan fucking tastic. Well, I loved it. If you it if you tried the original, they had the same thing. The same write ups on there and everything. <laughs> they had some other thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember when they did like the Patriots Way when they had all that. They they had cute little things on that. I yeah, just thought, they, I, thought I think they do awesome. it on every. I think they do it on every supplement too, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Kenton and Doug and uh, that's Kent, James. Uh, that's Kent, pretty sure that's Kenton. Yeah. That does that. Yeah. I don't Actually, know. I a... if, if you've ever talked to Kenton, that the words, his normal way of speaking, there it is. that doesn't sound like he, that was, is, is what he would write on the tub. Like, that, that seems like a different kind of mindset, unless you oh. can switch his brain into that something. Or maybe no, it's he does. We, over there. We, we, we were at a expo years ago, back when they were kind of coming up, and I was like, who the fuck writes this? And then he switched. He did it in front of me, did the accent, and he's just like, oh, you mean? And he just rattled it off. Gotcha. And that, okay. and that, 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 that uh, what is it, the southern accents, uh -huh. and just yeah. basically threw off a few paragraphs, and then he, I was just like, holy shit, and he's like, yeah, that's me, I can turn it on and off when I need to. Okay. And I was like, damn. Good man, good man, yeah, those, those are those are delightful to read. They bring a smile to my face. <clears throat> Brooke, I totally get my vote for Enduraline. Yeah, it's good stuff, just took it perfection. Are you still doing only one scoop, Brooke, or are you doing two scoops? Doesn't mess with your stomach. Great energy and mood. Yeah. Energy. Not energy. Whoops. Energy. Right. <laughs> Pete, been using all my extra pre workout for energy drinks lately. Energy drinks are too expensive for the daily. Uh, if you go find like those cheap gas station energy drinks, you can probably find like a Venom or something for like 69 cents or 99 cents or something. Yeah. I don't know. How are much you monsters energy? cost in your, in your place? Monsters? Like dollar, dollar yeah. 50 or something? Yeah, yeah, it's a dollar fifty. Sometimes at the grocery store, I'll see them on sale. Like I don't buy energy drinks typically, unless like we were doing the review of the ghost ones and the Alani new ones and the Zoe ones. I bought those, but typical like day to day or week basis, I don't. I'm not buying them. But I'll walk through, and it's usually regular. It's a dollar sixty, and sometimes you can see it for as cheap as like a dollar twenty or a dollar forty a can. Yeah. Um, Rains and bangs are always like two for fours, give or take. Yeah. Don't yeah. Rag. Yeah, you know, somewhere around there, two for four, sometimes two for five. The C4 energies are always two fifty to three bucks. The Alani News are three bucks a piece, or two fifty a piece. The Zoas were three bucks a piece. Um, Ugh. Yeah. I'm not... Oh, it was what about one. what about this one? <laughs> <laughs> it was like thirty two cents, I think, each. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you're still buying those, Lucas. <laughs> Lucas is the spokesperson, I think, now. He's just not telling us. Oh, I'm, I'm fucking sponsored. <laughs> That's one of the cool things I like in Europe, is, like, you'll go to some of these supermarkets in Europe, and they'll have Monster, and it'll be, like, crazy fucking expensive. Yeah. But then they'll have this local drink that costs, like, 
60 cents or some shit. Yeah, yeah. And it would be called something absolutely ridiculous like stallion or some animal or something. And, yeah, but and, I, I, went, I went to a market today and uh, there was like a huge stand of monsters because mm-hmm. they were doing like a sale or something. I think that they were like short dated or something. But the, the green cola was exactly the same price as the monsters. So I took both. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to walk through the adult video store to get to the market? Yeah, man. Of course. I always that's do the, that. That's the only place that sells that's my, green cola. That's my move, man. That's my move. <laughs> green cola. So, wait, is green cola, green cola is, at the, is in supermarkets. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Congratulations, green cola. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's not easy. <laughs> We're getting big, man. Like, do they have do they have the one liter bottles, or is it just still the small cans? I just I just saw cans. I didn't saw any. Oh, okay. Cans. So business is cans. good, but they're not in the value area. Just bro, I said it once. They had they will have like a stand with a with a lady or something that they were. That she's gonna sample something. I'm definitely gonna take a picture with her. <laughs> That's what I said. Straight away, man. Sean, are you a big energy drink guy? Somewhat, not as much. But uh, I actually had my first ghost yesterday, which was interesting. It was a mango, pineapple, or something along, along those lines. Mm-hmm. But mm. It was good. Yeah, it is good. That one's the mango. I'm trying to think. There's citrus. There's the mango one. There's the blue ras. There's the red, red berry. berry. And then watermelon. I think and my first was citrus. What, the citrus. Water, watermelon is the other one. Watermelon, yeah. I like the uh, the the blue ras one surprisingly. Uh, I, I did like too. The citrus one too. The citrus and the mango ones were good. Sean, did you try the the ghost's newest releases? No, just just I don't know if that pineapple one or that mango one was a new release or was older. But I was in vitamin shop just picking something up and grab one of them on a the fly. But mm. I give him credit because it's it's full disclosure on there. You know, I got to give mm. credit on that. Yeah, yeah. Them and uh, America Energy are uh, the two that jumped to mind that have been doing that. Yeah, American Energy has been doing it since it came out. Right. Shridhar, are the scooper sizes off these days? They've always been off. Uh, Assassin V7. One scoop seems to be around 15 grams of powder plus 5.5 gram scoop serve. Serving size on the is one scoop is 20. Always scoop is weigh your scoop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always was brings good. up a, yeah, for pre-workouts, always weigh your Especially stuff. in Europe. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's um just well right now there's material shortages for everything. So like bottle lids, scoopers, everything is off. Like people are just taking whatever they can get right now. So uh, you know, just be careful. Always wear out your stuff. Get get one of those little like jeweler scales or crack dealer scales or something. They're like twenty bucks on Amazon. You can do it. Yeah, highly recommended. Yeah. Was there was, so, there, was there something I, about No, it was because I had I had this pre workout this one time at FIBO and the, the max <laughs> scoop was like there's like three scoops and a, and a third, and I'm like, the fuck is this? I was like, how am I gonna do like? And then I, when I weighed the scoop and shit, it's not even like the the this I I weighed three <laughs> scoops and it came out to like five, and I was like, fuck me. So I was just glad that I had a scoop on hand because I I text Lucas. I was like, Lucas, do you have a scale? Because this does not feel right. And he said, no, no, no. So I went, I did two scoops and I was like, fuck, that was a good workout. Went back to my, uh, my place and I had a scoop and I was like, oh, that's because I had four and the max was three because the scoop was so fucking off. And go. I sent Lucas a picture and I had to maybe, it was three quarters or maybe a half was actually a single scoop. And I was like, people going to be bouncing off the fucking walls and losing their balls on this thing if they follow the directions. There we go, losing your balls. We haven't said uh, that in a couple of weeks, Shane. I'm so glad you brought that back, and it came up naturally. That, that pre-workout that uh, that was uh, that was intense. What's going on, Jojo? Creamy. Random question: If there is any flavor of protein you guys wish existed that doesn't, or if it does, that doesn't meet the standards you wish it did. So, is there any flavor of protein that we don't see commonly that you wish you did, or is there a flavor out there that you see? And that you think it would be cool, but it doesn't quite live up to what uh, your expectations were of it. We'll start with Sean. So I know salted caramel is very popular, but uh, 
I'm not a big salted caramel pan. I just I just can't get to the saltiness. Not the saltiness, but I just don't care for the salt in it. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And then the, the other day, I actually saw a collagen that had there was a Nutella spinoff. So that I want that I want to try. That looked pretty good. Lucas. I'm a big dark chocolate fan, so I would love to see the combination of dark chocolate and uh, macadamia nuts. Ooh, Ooh that sounds I pretty never, good. I never, I never saw this this combination, and honestly, I think it can blow up the water. So, especially with milk, it would, it would be mm, creamy. Be creamy. I see a collab with pollen. <laughs> I do. I mean, a pollen's chocolate already is it's it's on the darker spectrum. It's not super dark, but it's dark enough for me. Like I like a dark chocolate protein powder. Do you, so. do you guys know what charlotka is? What is it? Who? Charlotka. Is that like a Russian vodka? What? what? Nah. Uh, in uh, in U.S., it will be like an apple pie. Okay, apple right. pie. Yeah. Yeah, but it's. In, in Poland, it's really traditional. So it's like, it has like uh, apples, crumbles, and all is sprinkled with cinnamon and, uh, oh, so apple pie. and uh, uh, sugar on top. It's really good. But it's, it's made in a traditional way. In different counties, you have uh, different recipes. So it's really tasty. And I also, I sent some pictures to Robic, so who knows? Maybe he will come up with it. Any of these meeting your? Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like. Okay, it. so it's almost like an apple, like a, like a coffee cake, but with apple slices baked into it. Yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Charlotka. I've always been of the mindset that if it's a dessert, it needs to have chocolate in it. That's just. Chocolate. Yeah. I can't. I can't get the idea of fruit. Tasting desserty, it just doesn't hit the spot. Sorry. Just, I don't like a. Uh... Chocolate just kills it, though. That's always a, a yeah, win well, for me. I love chocolate in desserts. I don't like, like, chocolate and orange, or I don't want a lemon meringue pie, key lime pie, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, just make it yeah. like chocolate and delicious. Pumpkin pie. Yeah. Any pumpkin any fruit. Pie. Yeah, pumpkin. Vegetable, carrot pumpkin cake. Oh, no, it's not. Cake can be good. I, I just don't like the, like, the tang. I don't oh, like... okay, sorry. It's just fruits, vegetables. Mr. Green over there is all about it. <laughs> We got Shane the carnivore. What do you want to come out with a pork flavored way, or what do you want to do, Shane? <laughs> oh yeah, the, yeah, the question. Or a lamb, lamb flavored. See, for me, most protein powders are like kind of deliver on the same level when you compare it to like a chocolate milkshake or something. <laughs> like it's it, it's never gonna be on that level, mm -hmm. just purely because it's got no sugar in it. I think. But the one I think would be the most uh, didn't meet my standards was birthday cake. Like, no one's really come out with a birthday cake where I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, there have been some good ones, but when it first came out, I was like, I don't know what I expected, but I didn't expect like, it's a, not a, like, a, it's not a birthday cake. like a vanilla batter with sprinkles. Yeah, that's all. I don't know what I expected. Yeah. But, but like, yeah, I, I don't know. That one never really hit the spot for me. You're gonna call something classic like that? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I think more birthday batter. Some of them are more birthday batter than birthday cake. Yeah, they kind of just had that that battery base. As for a flavor, I'd want to see. I don't know. I think they're pretty much all fucking out there. With me. Although like Lucas's see... Lucas's macadamia, you can get some macadamia. I know Italians love the pistachio flavor protein. Bro, powder. I got. Much more flavors. On my yeah. Head. Oh, yeah man. You could you could probably get a couple and mix them together. There's a dark yeah. chocolate out there, and I have to imagine there's a macadamia somewhere. You could just put the yeah. two together. There you go. Wow. They're out there somewhere. I don't know. Those different nuts though, that's a European thing, I think. Like they had like I've seen a lot of them do macadamia, uh, like the hazelnuts, the pistachios. Honestly, macadamia ain't that popular in Europe. No, but I mean, like, yeah, you see them play around with it a yeah. lot more. It's, yeah. it's, whereas America, it's like peanut, it's peanut butter is certainly like the only thing yeah. that exists in the, boring, in the nut man. protein world. Yeah. It's not boring. Peanut butter is the shit. 
Yeah, I know, but it's like... I understand you know, it's, it. It's not fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see a... Uh, like a <laughs> bananas Foster flavor. Like, I know Nutrix did theirs, and theirs is pretty good. Not it yeah. wasn't exactly like it. Um, and then... No, Nutribio did that bourbon banana bread. I, I wasn't a fan of that. Now, if somebody could do like a bourbon bread pudding, I'd be okay with that. Bourbon infused bread pudding or something mm. like that. I'd be, I, I could, I could do with that or, you know, something along those lines. Um, I'm trying to think of any other kind of like desserts. I tend to gravitate more towards chocolate stuff. Uh, kind of like Shane. Sure. Not, not like a, like a, like a, like a broccoli pie or a, or a <laughs> green bean pudding or some shit. <laughs> broccoli cheddar soup. Broccoli cheddar soup flavored protein powder, <laughs> tomato yeah. soup, tomato See, basil soup. Put a put a vegetable flavored protein out there, and it, literally anything else. You see what sells, okay? I can tell you right now. No one, no one's sitting there going, "Mmm, that sounds good." No one. <laughs> I would maybe rub why, it. I, that's why I always rip on vegan protein powders. I don't like the taste of vegan protein powders at all. I mean, they, they're serviceable, but they're not great. Compared to whey, I like, always go to whey. Vegan protein powders don't taste like vegetables. The nah. worst ones taste like dirt. Yeah. It's yeah. literally like they forgot to pick the vegetable up and just grab the dirt. Yeah. That's what it kind of tastes like. But you get some good ones, but they still have that earthiness to them. Yeah. But I'm not going to lie. A vegan protein powder tastes far better than most vegetables. Easy. Especially now. Especially yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Alex, Lucas, dark chocolate yummy sports ice are coming soon. I didn't want to spoil it, so I didn't say anything. Well, good. S send a tub down this way, Alex, from Canada, if y'all can make it. If, okay. they're, if, if they're allowing supplies to cross the border. Now you just need the, the, the macadamia. I can find yeah. those at the store. I can go get some of those. Taking two scoops of Enduraline. There you go. That's a, that's a good solid 250 caffeine plus a whole bunch of other feel good stuff in there. Um, okay, so we had the, the protein question. What about an amino flavor? Is there any amino flavor that you haven't seen that you wish that was around? I don't know. There's fucking, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> like, a lot. Yeah. I said, it, I said it on one podcast already, but I said it once again. Blood orange. That's my probably go-to. Extend had a blood orange a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah that. a few. That's, that's, that's probably one of my favorites. Yeah. I always like their mango yeah. pineapple. They that was a good one. Killed it. Yeah. Really good. And also yeah, dedicated, dedicated, dedicated had uh, Unbeatable, I think. Yeah. It was in the blood orange. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Oh, so good. Sean, you got any got, flavors you haven't seen? Got me you memories from that, uh, that oh. store, do you? <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> I think that's the what that's the that's the category that probably has the most flavors out of out of all of them. I think. I mean, pre workout secondary, but nothing off the top of my head. I've seen so many of them. <clears throat> oh, I just thought of one. Ecto cooler. Ec Does anybody remember that? Probably not. It's another thing yeah. from my childhood. Ecto cooler, like the little high C with the slimer on the front from Ghostbusters. If some company can come out with an ecto cooler, that that would make my. If any any supplement brands listening to this, go look up ecto cooler. I'll pull up an image of it right now. Spell it? Uh, ECTO. What kind of magic this is? Dude, this is... You have no idea. There you go. I knew I had seen it before. VMI Sports pre-workout crush it came out with a flavor called Ecto Cooler. Ecto Cooler. See, there you go. It's right there. Ah. Slimer. I remember drinking this while we were sitting outside parades for Mardi Gras as a kid. Yeah, look up VMI Sports... Uh... Crush it with a K. Did they? Yeah. Well, it was called Ecto Cooler. I don't know how much more inspired by Ecto Cooler you could think. <laughs> Boom. Look at that. There's my picture. Is this product still around? <laughs> I doubt it. Out of stock. There it is. Oh, look at that. Look at that memory. I knew I'd heard it somewhere. Bro. You must. You missed the boat. You were not, in you were not uh, in the industry, deep enough, or thought well, no, I mean, provoking I've, I've and leading Tom and whatever. For, I've known Tom for years. What when you what when did this come out? 
2015. Oh. Okay, well, that's why I got into the industry wow. in March 2015. I don't think uh, I met Tom until... Oh, come on, man. Just click on the notifications. Don't be a <laughs> hey, why did you click the... Hey. Hey. <laughs> what? <laughs> Am I missing something? Huh? It said you want to receive notifications. You said no. Oh. <laughs> did you say what you did? <laughs> right in front of me. <laughs> so, so natural too. Just like what would I do? I didn't do anything different than the other times I've been here. <laughs> uh. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Funny. Uh, Pi Camel on this. I like the profile on this. I'm like. Uh, their KXR pre-workout was the first time I had ever had a 400 mid caffeine pre-workout. Of course. And I remember liking that a lot. Uh, Picotropin. I missed that ingredient. Yeah, this was back in the day. Yeah. Hygienamine right there with norcochlorine. Good old days. Yeah, buddy. Shane, do you ever go back to your archives? Do you ever go back to your archives like, you know, eight, ten years ago when you started? No? Just to compare what? No? If I do, I delete it. If I like search my site and I see something and it comes up from like back then, I'm like, oh, gross. That that was poorly written. Delete. <laughs> That's right. generally what I do. There's like 25,000 just... posts on my site. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I think it's 25. Last time I checked. Bro, that's that's too much. Yeah. Too much. 26,000. 26, God damn. <laughs> that's, me. that's me deleting a whole bunch. I went through and deleted it some from 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 way 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 back. Yeah. Robert, what are you thinking of the, the ninja pre? Have you get into that? I know you you drink it last week. Have you used it more? Yeah, I used it again this past week. It is it is so hot and it's been really humid in Texas lately for some reason. It's it's usually not humid here. Like it'll get you'll wake up in the mornings and it'll be like low seventies and then it jumps up to like 95, 96 degrees typically by the you know three or four o'clock and then it's down into the seventies at night. This year, it's it's just modulating between like 77 degrees and 90 degrees, but it's been so fucking humid. It reminds me of being in yeah. New Orleans. Um, but those sheets must be helping. <laughs> not in the least. Not. Oh, I mean, no. Sandy's sleeping well. I, I still wake up sometimes in like sweats and everything like that. I just, I always sleep hot no matter how magical. Bro, I told are. you, check the Uller. <laughs> I did. I think it's like three thousand bucks or two thousand yeah, bucks man. or something, man. Yeah, man. Shit. That's what I'm talking about. But it's fucking work. Uller, it's it's like this little like heat circulation pad, like cool, cool water kind of circulation or cooling uh, pad or something that you did, put on top of your mattress. Did, did Sean disappear? What happened? We did. It says device is not connected. Oh no. There you go. Were you, you, Were you hacked by the Russians? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's yeah. So, Sean, to answer your question before I get to get to the sheet shenanigans that these two are, are going on about, uh, yeah, I like the, like energy focus on it. It's great. The performance is super solid. You're sweating your ass off for like yeah. hours and hours after the workout, and it, like, I think in the fall or winter I wouldn't mind it, but like in the summer it's already hot enough here to where if I'm just kind of you know out and about or walking outside or doing anything else, I'm I'm already going to be getting hot. And bothered as it is, I don't need something else to make me even more. Um, so yes, I do like it. I just wish it wasn't ninety-five degrees outside. So yeah, I think it's one of those pre's that borders more thermal than pre, though. And whether you like Agreed. that or not, yeah. Yeah, you definitely get the, the the heating up on it. So Shane or Lucas, if you guys can get your hands on a tub of it, uh, I mean, I know it's a younger that's company that's just starting up, but I think you'll like it. Yeah, I think I have it coming to me next week or the week after. It stays for a long period of time, even after your workout. Yeah, I mean, I feel you feel like the the thermo component absolutely stays with you, and the the energy and focus. Yeah, you're still riding really, really good on it mm. for a few hours afterwards. At least mm. I have, and Sandy has. What yeah. about you, Sean? No, I've enjoyed it. I've, I'm about two or three in so far, and I've enjoyed. It's got it's got like two and a half grams of I'm sorry milligrams of like alpha yo, mm -hmm. and it's got three seventy five caffeine and a lot of other good ingredients too. But I've enjoyed it thus far. Yeah, there's something I can't. There's something squirrely on the the Hoopers, and I got the tub over there. Let me go grab it real quick. Double scoop, double scoop. Yeah, three seventy five would be low for you, Lucas. Three seventy five. 
Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like 300, 300 calf in like seventy five in energy or something. Let's yeah, warm up. It's uh, warm up for Luke. <laughs> it's all right. So for the energy, all right. So I'll just read everything. Six grams of citrulline malate, two one, three point two beta alanine, two point five betaine anhydrous, fifty milligrams of hordenine. That's in the strength, power, and performance matrix. Hordenine's not really a performance ingredient. I don't know why it's in there. Uh, the intense focus and anti-crash matrix is a gram of tyrosine, a gram of choline bitartrate, 150 of theanine. I can't imagine what this thing would feel like without the theanine in it. I don't like theanine in pre-workouts, but this is, I think this has got the right amount to where you're not feeling like... How much? 100 milligrams of theanine? 150 of theanine, mm -hmm. uh, 100 of neurofactor, 30 milligrams of N-methyltyramine, 2.5 milligrams of rawalcine, so alpha-ohimbine. This is where it's weird. It says three milligrams of Hooperzine A, 1%. That, that can't be right. So it's either... Like three micrograms then, no? If you break down 1% of three milligrams is like three micro, no? Yeah, because I mean, usually you put in 30 milligrams and that's 300 micrograms of it. So, yeah, so it's yeah. 30 micrograms. Is it 30 micrograms? Yeah, that's 1%, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think yeah. you're right, Shane. Yeah, I'm curious, but because that just that seems like a weird dose. Like you never see 30 micrograms of Hooper's in it, where you'd see like 50 micrograms is the lowest dose you would see. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wonder um, what the lowest is. What flavor did you get? I got. They sent me the pineapple sangria and the other flavor as well. So I got both flavors. I've only opened up the pineapple sangria one thus far. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, you've also got 300 caffeine anhydrous, 100 of Infinergy dicaffeine malate, so giving you another 75 of caffeine, 30 milligrams of isopropyl norepinephrine, and 50 milligrams of estrogen. So I guess yeah, that would be thirty micrograms. It's just uh, I'm not sure. It's it, that it's a weird it's a weird dose. I'm not used to seeing that. I would see fifty yeah. as like kind of the lowest dose, or, or maybe even twenty five if something's like a forty twenty kind of serving. But I need to get those guys on the podcast or get some clarification on it. So yeah, I wanted to ask: Did you had any interaction with the with these guys? Not yet. Devin, uh, Devin, one of the regular commenters on here, got hooked up with them on. Uh, Instagram found out with them on Instagram, reached out to me and said, "Hey, these guys are sending out, you know, little sample boxes to people that are just trying to get the word out on the thing, or just people that are in the know. Let me know what you want um, and give me your address. I'll forward it off to them, and they'll get back to me." And so we did that. He was a he was the intermediary. Okay. Yeah. Told you the price of the sheets would keep you awake at night. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, Sandy says they feel like a burlap sack. She says she sleeps well in them, but they're not super soft. And I'm wondering, well, then could we have just gotten like these per kale? So it's called like they've got a bunch. Of, I'll just pull up the goddamn site myself. What's it called? What these things call? Bowling brand. Wait, because Sandy to pop in with the sheets on again. In a three, yeah. two, one. <laughs> yeah. She, she's napping in the other bedroom right now. She's, in the sheets? Uh, yes, in the, in the sheets. Yeah, exactly. All right. So here is what we got. And I'll make sure I don't. I'm going to make sure to sign up for notifications from this website. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? 10%. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Look at that. You don't even know my email. <laughs> I yeah, do. Do yeah. you really want do you really want stuff for bullet brights to your real email? You no. Know. <laughs> so Sheets. Okay, sheet sets. Here we go. All right, so they have the signature, which is cloud weight and super soft. So this is their signature line. And then we did the... the hell is it? The percale, the hemmed sheet, right here. And it says smooth structured fabric, but maybe we should have just gone with the classic clean, and we did, uh, where is it? Stone colored. So that's it right there. And we did the, uh, the king size. So, yeah. Bro, you went to bougie, I think. I, well, that's what, that's when you messed up. Yeah, and that there's the price tag on it. But we also saved 15% because Devin had a, a code from a, a radio show that he listened to, and he gave that to me, so that helped save on something. Oh, yeah. But these these people are fucking liars. <laughs> they might you stay go. cool, but they are, they are as Gaspari, soft as Gaspari had uh, two milligrams of hypozine and super pump aggression. The one that they spent three years formulating? Yes, that's the one. <laughs> See, maybe there's some careful thought got into it. It took eight years to formulate. 
Yeah. Okay, now here's here's the bullshit. All right, so here's a review on the site. I give these sheets a five-star rating. They are so smooth and comfortable. They're not smooth. I mean, they're, they're comfortable, but they're, they're not like satin sheets or like super fine cotton sheets or something. And knowing that they are organic and that the people making them are paid fairly makes them even better. Good for the planet and for the people. Thanks. Oh. Fuck off, Judith. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it's time for a two-star rating. <laughs> it's going to be. So, most comfortable sheets I've ever owned. You're Bro, an old five stars? Not Doris. Damn. Doris. I don't believe you, Doris. Who names their people Doris these days? That's a name from like the 30s. I like maybe, the name Doris. Maybe, maybe there's something wrong with Robert because it's sounding like everyone else loves them. I mean, they're, they're fine. They're, they're not worth $300. Because hmm. you know what we did the very next day? Sandy said, go ahead and order... Uh, Order the forty dollars sheets off Amazon that Brooke recommended, and we did. And they're sitting in the other room waiting to get washed and dried. Oh, so you haven't you haven't used those one yet, though. No, we're we're gonna give these these uh super expensive sheets, you know, time. Gotta give, them, gotta give them a fair trial. Right. Yeah. So it's been uh what is it a week and a half now that we've used them. There's a, a Bro, three week three thirty day money back guarantee, so we're gonna run them for another week. Next anyway. package, I'm sending you some some Polish bed, sheets. Bed sheets. <laughs> Polish bed yeah. <laughs> yeah, made from like special Polish organic fucking cows. Yeah. <laughs> grass fed. Yeah. Yeah, grass, grass fed. fed cows. Mm. <laughs> Sustainably sourced. Oh my god. Yes. I'm gonna, Polish, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna put some powder <laughs> into them. Uh, going back to our <laughs> other. Question earlier, Adam. Butter pecan ice cream would be a great flavor of whey protein. And Pri, I've always wanted white grape, white cranberry, and lychee. Ooh, butter pecan ice cream could be really, really good. I thought Dedicated did it. Butter pecan, um, yeah. Did they? Yeah. Fusion Pro. White grape? Did white, do a white, white grape? grape? Did, did Redcon do a white grape? If I'm not mistaken, I thought that way, way back, Jack did a white grape. Yeah, let's see. I, mean, that, uh, I, I might be off on that one. I know they did something. Muscle Tech Anarchy has white grape flavor. Uh, Core Nutritionals ABC Pre has a white grape flavor, but that's their old flavor. That's their old pre workout. Yeah, Muscle Tech Anarchy. <clears throat> Alani New has candy grape. Yeah. Damn it. I'm trying to remember what was there. I thought Jack did one. Eh. Yeah, it's uh <laughs> I think Brooke is your biggest Brooke, supporter. Five dollar super chat donation towards Brooke Sheets, special Polish cows, and site notifications with no clothes box. Brooke Brooke is the best. <laughs> Brooke, you are an all-star. Thank you so much for always tuning in and for your generosity. We appreciate it. You are awesome. Polish cow's going to love you. I'm going to send you some Polish milk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sean, you still have that timer running? We're officially off the rails at this point. <laughs> yeah, we're about an hour. <laughs> Close this bitch up. <laughs> Jojo. Thoughts on sleeping only four to five hours daily. Is it possible to sleep deep enough to still be getting optimal results without getting six to eight hours of sleep while strength training and eating consistently? What do you think, gentlemen? This is, this is my life most of the fucking time. <laughs> it depends on your on your daily schedule and on your uh, sleep routine. You can you can go to bed on the on the exact same time every day and just just do your like you know uh sleep for four or five hours just not lay it in bed i'm not i'm not i'm not talking about laying in bed i'm just like say, talk, talking straight strictly sleeping four or five hours that's plenty to regenerate recoup and move on i think it's a rhythm thing yeah i find that if i sleep eight hours, eight hours, eight hours for like, I don't know, eight weeks, and then I get six, I'm going to feel like shit. You will be screwed. If I, just, if I just sleep six, 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 yeah. I'm fine. But then, so I'm usually, I'm usually, I'm, I'm six. Sometimes I, I've had, 
a Febo, four to five is about right. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, six. I don't think I, I can't get as much as eight because my daughter always fucking runs in at like seven and just busts my shit open. Did she so, run in and say, "Bro, wake up, bro, wake up"? <laughs> she, like, she pretty much. She, she like she'll come in and she'll just like. She usually goes Where's to my, my wife. Cop? She goes to my wife and she'll go, she'll say lunch, lunch, and then she'll slap your face. She'll say lunch. I'm like I don't want to fucking get you lunch because that's every meal. And then and then she'll kind of like look at you and then she slowly starts picking your clothes up off the ground. It's like shirt, pants. I'm like yeah, I know what my fucking clothes are. I just said I don't want to do it. But she's like looking for things and then she gets the phone and she's looking for things around the room. Like why isn't he moving? It's like because I'm fucking tired. Piss off. So I'd like to match Brooks' donation of $5 for Dad of the Year Award for Shane. <laughs> Dude, are you awake? <laughs> it's, it's, she go up and like, open your eyes up. Daddy, Daddy, you awake? No, she doesn't do that yet. She does the, she, put a, she puts her hand in your mouth first. Which, <laughs> if that's if you, if you wake up to that first, that's the worst thing in the world. Daddy, you breathing? God knows where that hand has been, too. I mean, it could have, like, <laughs> been up the cat's rectum or in the toilet or, you know, wherever. But then there are the occasions where, like, she's asleep and we woke up and we're like, well, this is fucking weird. Why isn't she, is she alive? Yeah. And then you go in, you go and shake her and everything. It's, oh, no, she's, she looks good. Okay, yeah, she's still breathing. The chest is still kind of moving. It's all right. She's not passed out. So, okay, so wait, but I'm going to ask you guys something. So for Robert and Shane, and Lucas, no disrespect, how many times you when you're infants... Did your wife say to you, you go and check on the baby, and your wife said, is she breathing, or is he breathing? Wives ever do that to you? Uh, I do that. I like, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Back when she was younger, I would do that. Like, when she was like, one, I'd like, go in just to be like, is she not like, dead? Because I mean, that's the end goal, to not <laughs> let her die. Right? Goal? That's what wow. you want to do. You want to raise her so she's alive. So, I would always go in and I'd be like, and I have to get close because I'm like, I can't fucking tell. Her chest is so small. And then I, even up, up close, so I put my hand on her. I'm like, okay, yep, she's she's beating. She's breathing. I did that a lot. Not so much but now. We did it probably when, like, between, like, when she was born and a year old. But, I mean, she's yeah. she's always been a, a decent sleeper. But it, it wasn't, like, everything we were worried about. Um, she's always been a really sound sleeper. Um, I don't think we, like, there was maybe a time or two. Uh, that we that Sandy got maybe a little worried about it, but nothing nothing too too much. But when you leave the room though, and either mm -hmm. your wife is saying, "Is she breathing?" If she wasn't, don't you think you'd come out of the room hysterical? <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's dead. It's all right. We'll let her be. She's outside. She's outside. That's like we'll go out. Sandy and I will go out to a distillery or a brewery <laughs> or a restaurant or something, and we'll run into somebody we know, or it's, it's other people we're meeting, and they said, "Oh, well, where's your daughter?" Thinking. We just left her in the car, all the windows up, the heaters turned on. She's going to be fine. She's just sitting in there baking in her car seat. She's, I mean, or she's, she's out playing in the street. What the fuck do you think? If the kid's she's not with it. me, obviously it's with a babysitter. Maybe they're just get like, a curse. You don't have kids, Lucas. Maybe they're just saying, like, you have, they see you all the time with a baby and then they see you without. Yeah. Just, oh, well, we're so, so. These are my kids, man. Yeah. <laughs> the like, one, is, one is missing. Yeah. Well, there's a few things that people will say when they have kids. They're like, isn't it? Well, they'll say it's it's such a wonderful thing. It's so life changing. Yes, it does change your life. But then they'll say something to the effect of, I just can't remember what life was like before I had my kids. And I'm thinking, yes, you can. Did you have a stroke? Did you forget something? Like, do you have, are you brain damaged? Does, that makes no fucking, of course I remember it was me and Sandy pick up and go wherever we wanted to, whenever we wanted to. Now, Sophia is super easy. She's very cordial. We take her and do our things with her whenever we want to. And we've got her on a schedule to where we know we're doing stuff between this time. She goes down for a nap every day between 1.30 and 3 if it's on the weekends. If it's during the week, she's at school, so she can do whatever she wants to do there. And then in the afternoon, between 4 and 8, we can do whatever we want to as well. I just I, – I, when people say, yeah, I don't remember what it's like without kids, I'm thinking, mm, no, I, I, I can definitely remember what it was like. I'm excited for when that is. I'm enjoying – you know, all the steps and process and machinations of raising a child now. But it'll be nice when she's also 18 and out of the house. Mm, yeah, I can kind of see that, yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. So yeah. But, well, we'll be we'll be visiting Lucas next year, so he, he can. Uh, You're going to dump him off, and he's going to be a uh, Nikki and Shane date night. He can he can find out how annoying my little bro. Bitch I'm gonna is. I'm gonna sleep in woods. <laughs> Uh, going back to JoJo's question, uh, it like I only I sleep so. about seven hours each day. Is it is it possible to get m- if you can get better sleep? Maybe I mean, do you feel fully recovered when you wake up? Do you feel cognitive alert, or are you relying on stimulants to just basically get you in like up and rolling in the morning until you crash at night? You know, how's your recovery? How's your performance? How's your cognitive function? How's your mental health? Like, do you feel like you're generally in a good mood, or do you feel like you're always pissed off, angry, irritable, things like that? Um, th- there's all kinds of things. So, I mean, everybody's I, got I, their own individual yeah. sleep needs, but I'd say the if average he's been, person. If he's been doing it and he has, and like he's still feeling tired of five hours, might need a little more. Yeah. But like do it consistently <laughs> for like a few weeks and then just measure on performance, I think is another way to do it. Yeah. Like if you're actually lifting good, increasing strength, gaining size, losing weight, whatever. Yeah then you should be fine. It might just, because I also notice that sometimes, especially at FIBA, when you train with Lucas at fucking 5.30 in the morning, you may feel like absolute dog shit, but you'll still be able to lift pretty good. And it's still working. Yeah. So it's, it, you might be finally internally and uh, energetically recovered, but you might you might still be yawning and feel like shit. Yeah. And I think the, the, cat, the key here is getting optimal results. I don't think... You will still get results only sleeping four to five hours daily. Is it as optimal as if you had no other stress in your life and you were sleeping seven to nine hours each night? No, I don't think you're going to get optimal or the best results possible only sleeping four to five hours. You can definitely still make results, but will they be as optimal as if your sleep was perfect and you were getting eight hours of like super deep sleep every night? That's that's something to consider. You know what? The only time when I'm out of my uh, routine is when we are doing the podcast. We are doing it at eight, and I'm normally in bed yeah. by nine. That's that's like my I'm a old grandpa when it comes to like going to bed. So I'm nine is like I'm on I'm on dif- in a different world with like you know playing around and so on. But uh, you know <laughs> even when I'm when we are recording like for let's say two two and a half hours or something, and I'm going to bed like let's say eleven. I'm still w- waking up on Sunday yeah. at like six in the morning, and I'm uh, awake, and I can do my cardio and so on. So it doesn't matter to me, you know. Yeah. One day is not going to screw you around, but if it's if it's if it's consistent and you are like uh, undersleeping, that's going to be a big problem. So I would advise to like. Take, uh, take some notes and just like see how you feel after like five hours, six hours, and just like try to also try to like implement some tracking devices if you can. I would I would highly suggest some kind of like a aura ring or like a Fitbit, those kind of things. Yeah. They can oh, track there you speed. go. I know what you feel. I, I know the feeling of sleeping more than yeah. you're used to and you feel tired. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes if I sleep like eight and a half hours or something, I'll feel more tired than if I did have only slept seven hours or something. The the grogginess is is the Mm. the worst. Yeah. Jojo, I think it's important too. Are you waking up to an alarm or are you just waking up on your own where your body's like naturally waking you up? Because again, if you're waking up to an alarm, your rhythm's definitely thrown off. Agreed. That's a great point, Sean. Great point. Um, Shane will be out next week because he took his daughter to the hospital to get the fingers reattached and he bit off. I have a problem of not waking up. No matter what she does, I just like the only. I woke up earlier this week on Wednesday because my daughter was sick, and so she was waking up like two, three times a night. And every time she wakes up, my wife does. But I'm just, I'm out. Nothing. You, a hurricane could fly by, and I'd probably still be asleep. But then on Wednesday, Nikki swapped Ava for me for for her. So she put Ava in the bed, and then she went and slept in Ava's bed. <laughs> And like I woke, it was like I don't know, three in the morning, four in the morning, some shit. And I, I, I hear this crying, and then I like wake up, and I was like, with it, I look over and I see Alyssa, where, where's my wife? And it's, Ava's sitting there, just crying with her little blanket, just like sitting there. I don't know how long she was doing it, and I was like, the fuck, where's where's my wife? 
son of a bitch switched her. And then I was just like, just lie back down, lie back down. And she's just like, mama, mama. I was like, you can deal with me, man. Just lie down. She's not. Nah. When I found, when I found Nikki. Oh, Fuck off. Good for nothing. <laughs> I, just, I love your reactions to, to the to these things, Shane. It's just your, your, the mental processes and the things that you say. It's just the fucking awesome. best dad ever. <laughs> uh, Having children, that's a no for me, dog. I can't be responsible for the lives of other things. Can't even own plants. Well, Brooke, I got bad news for you, because when Sandy and I come to Florida, guess who we're dumping uh, the halfling off with? It's going to be a fun night with Uncle Brooke. I mean, Aunt Brooke, not Uncle Brooke. Ding, 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 like a winner. <laughs> Jiffy Jank. This is the first time commented from Jiffy Jank. Hey guys, hope all is well. All is well. Just recently started taking pre-workouts. I see a lot of mixed information about DMAA and DMHA as being dangerous and addictive. Any truth to these claims? I'm surprised you can actually still find stuff with DMAA in it, to be honest. I'd be very careful. That. <laughs> I don't think it's DMAA is one thing. It's probably laced with something. I think you answered your own question there, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably not finding legit DMAA in pre-workouts these days. Um, I'll save my thoughts for the end. Uh, Sean, go ahead and lead off on this one. No, I, t I tend to agree. It's probably definitely something else. DMHA I see more of, but not the DMAA. But, uh, yeah, like anything, I would definitely cycle that on and off if you're going to use it. Do you think it's actually addictive or dangerous, though? In the amounts that we're seeing in pre-workouts. We'll put that caveat. I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, I don't know if some of the glorified stim heads will admit that they are or aren't. Mm -hmm. hmm. Shane? I I mean, uh, I like what you said. Like, I, when I saw DMA and DMHA from, like, reputable brands like Midsize, guys who've been established and around for a while, I kind of, you could trust the DMA and DMHA. But then with, like, newcomers... And then when it's only now that it's really only smaller brands that have it, I'm always like unsure, like, you know, if it is real DMAA, like you're saying. Um, but if you do come across it, or based on my experience with both of the ingredients, I had no addictive problems. I had nothing dangerous. Um, the only addictive part is that you feel fucking good. And when you have a pre-workout without it, you felt like shit. Not that you felt bad, but like you just knew that you could have felt way better. And I mean, I never really was like, would be going two or three days and just jonesing for my next DMAA or anything like that. It was, yeah. it was always just, I mean, I, I think the fact that you would take it before your workout, whereas I feel like if it was truly addictive, you'd be like, I need to wake up to this shit or something. Yeah. Lucas, there was one that I had recently sent to me that was very interesting. A DMAA with the big old manufactured in a CGMP facility. That was a good one. Yeah, hey, you know, you know what? I lived in the era when DMAA blew up. Mm -hmm. We basically went from DMAA to uh, MC Trade to DMBA to uh, DMHA, and you know, if I remember, like. And recall it the dmaa that was like back in the days you can't compare it to a uh, dmaa that's mm. used nowadays that's uh, completely two different versions and you, you can you can call me a liar or whatever you want but the feeling is completely different and i think that you know even if you're like triple scoop double scoop or whatever you know you can't like com compare it Anyway, so uh, I was I would say that these times of DMAA and DMH era are already gone, and they are now using some kind of like uh, I don't know different combinations of chemicals or I don't know, but it's it's definitely not DMAA in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but as far as like you know if it's dangerous or addictive, I don't think so. No, but uh, you know it's it's hard to, it's hard to say. For some people, you know, uh, like uh, a drink per day can be addictive. <laughs> For some, it can be it can be fine. So just do your own thing, you know. But if you are like uh, addictive, if you have a like addictive personality, then 
I would advise just like to stay away from those kinds of things and just like you can you can have a great workout on uh, good stim stim uh, pre workouts, but not like super stimmed or like from the gray area, as you call it, you call them right. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that, and that kind of brings us back to what we were talking about in the beginning of rotate these these really hard hitting high stim pre workouts. Don't take them every single day. Um, I don't think they're addictive, and they're not dangerous in the doses that we're seeing in using these products. I mean, everything water can be dangerous if you consume too much and you go hyponatremic and you you know you flush all the you water down all the electrolytes in your body. So I mean, water can kill you at the right dose, um, just like a bunch of other compounds. So are they addictive in and of themselves? No, but I think Lucas brought up a really good point. Like some things for some people, the way they're wired. I mean, having just like one drink a day, even smelling alcohol can be super addictive to them. They can't have one cigarette and just put it down or something like that. There's, um, look at how your personality is and, you know, or if, if you're even worried about them being somewhat addictive, just use it, save it for one day a week, your hardest work out of the week, save it for that. And then just lock it in a cabinet somewhere else. But I think most of that is probably just fear monitoring from supplement companies that don't sell products with DMAA and DMHA, uh, just because, you know, they... It's not a, a fair playing field if you're comparing pre workouts. You know, if you somebody got somebody that's putting amphetamine like compounds in there versus products that are only using caffeine, you can't really compare. It's an apples to oranges comparison at that point. You're not comparing two similar things. Um, but I don't think that, yes, they are hypertensive. They can elevate blood pressure. They can cause vasoconstriction. But I use moderately and in the appropriate dosage, you don't really have anything to worry about, provided that you're an otherwise healthy individual with no pre-existing conditions. Well said. Yeah. Uh, Brooke, I feel like your child is not like other ch children. No, she is not. I see a small, eloquent child with a top hat. <laughs> and a tutu. A top hat and a tutu. Uh, Jojo, I have an alarm set. And I would say four out of seven mornings, I wake up before the alarm. Hmm. Then you're probably getting enough rest. I mean, on the mornings that you wake up, I, I don't know the last time I set an alarm, but I, I wake up naturally sometime between 5.30 and 6.30 every morning anyway. God damn it, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been that way since I was a kid, though. Like, even teenager, I never slept in. If I sleep till 7, that's sleeping in late for me. If I sleep in, I wake up at like 9 or 10. Yeah, I can't do that. I've, I've That's never. Been like I got to sleep at like midnight though. Sometimes one or two. Right. Yeah, and I'm in bed like Lucas. We we go and and crash at night at nine o'clock, and then we'll oh, fall yeah, asleep like sometime between fucking old nine ladies. thirty or so. And five a.m. in the morning, I'm texting Shane. Yeah. Where the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the I'm not the only one. Ben obviously had trouble yeah. fucking every time he would go. I was, all I had to do was beat his no, performance. He never, he never had issues with, uh, with, uh, with sleeping. He was always, he was always on time at the lobby. Or maybe one time he was late. Who, Ben? Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? He would make it for like two days, three days, and then he'd just be like, yeah, I'm not coming tomorrow. Oh, yeah, he was barely yeah. there. He would just knock shut from PES. Uh, ben ben. PES. Oh, Carpenter? Yeah. That's oh, okay. It. Is he still with him? I think so. Oh, He's doing his own thing now. Uh, That's a good question. Know. I mean, FIBA workouts would be different without him. Oh, yeah. Jiffy Jank. Thanks for the answer, guys. I appreciate it. You're welcome, Jiffy. Thanks for uh, posting a comment on here. If you got any more, this is the first time we've seen a comment actually get through from you. I don't know if you've tried to ask a question before, but uh, keep them coming. A family member has issues with cholesterol. Any wrecks from y'all? Nothing medical, but supplements have made great strides. Anything, gents? There's not been an issue with me. I don't, don't really have any experience with it. What types? Uh, what type of uh, issues with cholesterol? Maybe I would say the probably the, the lipid high. profile aside, like low HDL, high LDL, maybe triglycerides are elevated too. Just an unfavorable cholesterol profile. You know what pisses oh. piss me off? What pisses me off with these tests? They're like so old school, man. They're not comparing like the uh, the correct LD LDL fractions and the HDL fractions. Correct. You got like so many LDL fractions, and you know the the medicals can't even like read properly. You know the the exact amounts and so on. So I would like 
be a bit safe as far as like, giving advices. But uh, but if if there is like a issue with cholesterol, I will, I always say try to like see what type of fats you are consuming per day, uh, what what are the amounts, and move from there. And you will see a huge improvement if you were like even like uh, do this check and based on that make some adjustments. So instead of like using like cheap shit like canola oil and so on, refined shit, uh, replace them with the omegas and also some olive oil that will definitely improve the, the blood markers. Yeah, that's that's great points. Go ahead, Sean. Now, I, I guess, Brooke, the question is like, how, what kind of issues are we talking, you know, five points over? Or are we talking 50, 60 points? Because if it's just a couple of points, great things like Lucas said, I know garlic has been shown to so to help a little bit. Um, but again, if we're 250, 300 plus, then you're going to need the atorvastatins, the statins, things like that. Um, something else to consider is family members, just overall lifestyle, health issues, things like that. Are they very overweight? What's their diet look like? Um, get them because if, if they're already overweight and or obese, uh, start getting the, the excess body fat off. That's the first thing right there. Start cleaning up their diet. Make the swaps like Lucas said. Get some more omega-3s in there. Get out the, the refined shit and all of that. Um, from the supplement side of things, you can look at something like olive leaf extract, 500 to 1,000 milligrams a day. showing beneficial effects in preventing LDL cholesterol uh, adverse effects from that. Uh, this can also we can also parlay this into um, a question that Devin sent me in the email where he was asking about red rice red yeast rice extract, which that's promoted a lot and it actually I think it got a ban letter from the FDA or just certain things, but red yeast rice has been shown to lower cholesterol levels and like or promote a more favorable cholesterol profile, lower the bad LDL, increase HDL levels. And that's because red yeast rice has a naturally occurring statin in it called lovastatin. And it's got some other beneficial health promoting compounds in there. So you can look at things like that to also have beneficial effects on cholesterol. So red yeast rice, olive leaf extract, some other things just for overall cardiovascular health would be uh, CoQ10. Something Hawthorne really berry. good to look at. Say that again, Lucas? Hawthorne berry, NAC. Yeah, Hawthorne berry is great. NAC is really good. Grapeseed extract, solid with that too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's that's kind of it off the top of the head, uh, Brooke. Cholesterol guru Lucas, thank you. She's super <laughs> healthy workout and healthy diet. Well, some people just genetically um, have a little bit higher cholesterol level, but like Lucas said, with the, the way they're testing with that, and especially go look up um, uh, Dave Feldman. Look up some of the podcasts Dave Feldman has done on cholesterol, and he'll show you that. The yeah. way they're testing cholesterol isn't exactly, you know, the, maybe the most optimal. It's a little antiquated. I will definitely uh, go to a different doctor that specializes in uh, cholesterol levels and check not only the LDL, just one fraction, but check all the fractions from LDL. And then you will see which one is messed up. And based on that, you will know. Jiffy Jank. Mostly a lurker, I like chilling in the background and buying products with high reputation praise. The only pre-workout I see currently touting DMAA is Dark Labs Cracked. <laughs> but I don't know if the company got shut down because almost every product went out of stock recently. No, it doesn't. It's it's not. It's just... It's a European company. It's a Polish company, <laughs> to be more specific. That's why... That's why it's hard to get it because it's probably hard to import it to the U.S. This, this, this probably is why out of stock in U.S. But in Europe, it's still available, so you can get it here. Um, but uh, as far as like you know, a reputable and highly praised, well, I would say there are like many more brands that are better. <laughs> than dark labs but that's just my my thoughts i don't want to get sued or anything like that so yeah man. Plus so I didn't a, it. it's a good thing to bring this up when robic's not here <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah man. well there goes our sponsorship from uh dark labs thanks lucas <laughs> <laughs> we still got green cola there we do dmha comes from special polish cows oh yeah exactly 
it's a it's an isolated fraction from the uh the hind milk of the Polish cows. Milk we go. You need to milk it properly. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. MM, everyone shows here. <laughs> <laughs> Question of the day. When you guys were discussing this last week, okay, and you can look this up, but I don't remember exactly what, but creatine, use of creatine also either increases the amount or the motility. One of the two, just a little FYI. Oh, so a new study came out, you're saying that? No, I've been reading it many years ago. He had a roommate that swore by it. <laughs> but then when he looked it up, I was like, okay. I don't know if it was scientifically proven, but there's some articles out there that state it. Here we go. Uh, creatine. <laughs> here we go. We're going to, we'll share this with everybody so they can see we're, we're not just making shit up here. I told you guys the creatine will be like a gold standard soon. We're talking lassos here, not just ropes. <laughs> this is a fairly recent study, too. Oh. April of 2018. Creatine enhances the duration of sperm capacitation, a novel factor for improving in vitro fertilization with small numbers of sperm. See? Oh. You live, you learn. There you go. Yeah, because everyone needs to know this, right, Lucas? <laughs> yeah, man. Shane, we're changing lives here. We're changing lives. Yeah, so for people who uh, want to have kids, who said, who said we are like a game-changing podcast? Game-changing, trend-setting, industry-innovating podcast. Ah, uh, see, we're we crazy one sperm at a time. <laughs> Here we are. We're, we're, we're helping the male population. All right. So yes, there we go. Creatine and improved sperm cost. So yet another way you're making gains on creatine, bro. <laughs> Even my, even my, even my, uh, my guys will be jacked. <laughs> God. Uh. Sick. His tails will be jacked. No, the, 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 the jackness will pass on down to the down the down the line. Ah. <clears throat> uh. Listen, I'm glad Robbie never heard about the thing. Speaking of banned ingredients and new pet, wait, where is he again? Yeah, we can't Robbie where off. is he? He's at a housewarming party. He said, I've got 50 to 60 people coming to my house. I've got this big housewarming party. I don't have time for you guys. Yeah, so right. it is his house. <clears throat> That's understandable. Well, he, said, he said there'll be, I'll, I'll read the exact message. Are you going to read the exact message? I am. We're going to slip in some, some hateful words. We are. I can find it. Just realize also, I'm missing two consecutive final scoops. More ammunition for you to destroy me. This Saturday, same time, I have 60 to 70 people at the house, including TJ. Next Saturday, my flight back to New Jersey. I'm in Dallas Wednesday night to Saturday. To which my response was, you are the worst. Well Very sweet. Love it. <laughs> and that's, and then See, we... housewoman, I can understand that. I can understand that. No. I, I don't We're going to have a housewoman. I don't know if I'm, I'm not going to have it at six in the morning, though, so it won't be a problem. But uh, yeah. Korea nuts. <laughs> Amen. That's a good name for the for the podcast. Korea nuts. nuts. No, that's a good name for a supplement. Oh yeah. Someone needs to do a sexual performance health supplement with your hemp bean, horny goat weed. Add a sprinkle bit of tribulus and then just say newly founded creatine monohydrate or HCL to get into a few capsules. There you go. And call it just Korea nuts. Don't want to call it lose your balls? <laughs> no. <laughs> call it Korea nuts and say go nuts for creatine. That'll be the first supplement that Stack produces on its own. There you go, Shane. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to make no money because no one wants to get bigger jizz off creatine. <laughs> yeah, we did a, we did a, we did a, we did a, 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 a study, and we got ten average male and measured the, the volume with a, with a, with a cup. Go with four. <laughs> I found another <clears throat> study. Hold on. Here we go. Hold on. Open Pandora's box. It's yeah. an interesting thing. 
serum cre or semen creatine and creatine kinase activity as an indicator of sperm quality. There you go. Hmm. That's a 2020 study. Semen contains high amounts of creatine and increased creatine kinase activity. Lower semen creatine is associated with reduced sperm motility, while high creatine kinase activity is associated with poor sperm quality. Uh, creatine kinase is a marker of muscle damage and, and protein breakdown, too, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the findings suggest that creatine is of importance for sperm metabolism and that creatine supplementation could be useful in males with poor sperm quality. There you go. Get jacked everywhere with creatine. Yeah, but surely there's a limit on how jacked your sperm can get, right? We don't know yet. We don't know that limit. I feel like it, there's a... Like, I feel like there's a limit on... 40 like, inch tails. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not like you're going to be shooting balls. It's... You, you have to... The volume can only be so much and the How do you sperm... Know? Qu the have sperm we read, quality... Do we know that, though? Do, have we even approached it? I'm pretty sure so the sperm quality it. is... The sperm quality is probably going to have 100% somewhere. Maybe. I mean, it's Unless kind of like bulletproof. Point. Yeah, so something, something, something is either bulletproof or it's not, right? It's, <laughs> you get to the standard where it's bulletproof, right? Do you get to this? <laughs> you get to the quality where your sperm is top notch, creatine or not? There you go. I don't know. <clears throat> Jojo, based on y'all's knowledge and experience, how many people on average actually have cholesterol problems and any other problem typically related to poor weight and activity, being that they have moderate healthy eating and strength training? You know what, based on uh, stuff about, that I saw and from my medical background, because I was in the medical school for like five and a half years, I saw some messed up uh, blood test results. And even from people that were like uh, perfectly fine with their health, their markers were good, uh, they were active, they didn't smoke, they didn't drink, but they were cholesterol levels were like on completely different levels. So uh, sometimes it's a genetic thing. Sometimes it's like a food uh, related factor. So just like uh, some people uh, just write it down. I saw some comments that they should like do a NMR lipo, lipo profile test, those kind of things. Yeah, Sridhar did that. And I, I think that's, that's, that's the right one that I was related to. And I think that, yeah, based on that, you should like go and check it out. So props to Shreedar for that. Yeah, great comment, Shreedar. Yeah, the particle size is definitely like, I think you want the the fluffy kind of cholesterol is the good cholesterol, and then the other smaller particle particles are the more dangerous ones? Yeah, the smaller, the smaller is, is more dangerous because it, it can like uh, flow past through the, the barriers that cell, cell has, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say a lot of the issues that we're seeing the type 2 diabetes high cholesterol levels cardiovascular <clears throat> disease rates and all of that stuff i venture 90 95 percent of it is lifestyle related so poor diet not enough physical activity being stressed to the gills not getting enough sleep uh those kind of things i think it's, it's all so much more of that than actually we're all ticking time bombs from a cholesterol and cardiovascular standpoint it's more what are you putting into your body and you not exercising that's creating more of these this strain on the healthcare system and why everybody in the world's sick, unhealthy, and dying. I don't want to open another Pandora box as far as the other issue when it comes to you know what, pan pandan pandan you know stuff. Yeah. So I don't want to I don't want to mess with this topic. The unknown but, virus. The but yeah, but virus. I, yeah, but I just want to say that you know it's like the the sun exposure. It's like just such a simple thing, but I like correlation between this and vitamin D or uh, zinc and voila. There you go. Yeah. I'm Don't bring too mushrooms either. Yeah. Introduce your mushrooms. Oh yeah. Sean, do you like mushrooms are a favorite of mine and Lucas's. I don't know if Shane, I don't think Shane does any mushrooms. Do you? So when I get pre-workouts with cordyceps, I love it, but mm -hmm. I generally dose just lines made itself between a thousand and 1500 a day, just a regular extra capsule. Yeah. Do you have a preferred brand that you use or just whatever you can find? I don't. I mean, I get a lot of stuff like all these little small companies off Amazon send me stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it's probably low quality, but I seem to feel a little bit of a difference. But I know there's one uh, 
Fresh Caps, that seems to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've heard of them. I'm going to have to see. Check them out and see. Besides Cordyceps and Lion's Mane, did you try uh, any other? No, I've not. Rishi Chaga, uh, Turkey Tail. Let's Go see. with uh, Rishi before bed. Yeah, you will do that. You will, sleep, you will sleep like a baby, man. Oh, I thought you were saying you screw up my, my sexual libido because I'd like to appear with Lion's Mane. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> uh, there, there are so many things I, so many, yeah, so many not nice things Next. I should <laughs> say. I mean, I, I pretty much told you in the text message the other day, Sean, what I felt about that individual. He's also gone, going on a crusade against uh, Ashwagandha too. So yeah. that's toxic, which makes no sense either. So that's, I mean, that's one of the most benign compounds that we've seen. Like KSM has got so many benefits for so many people across a wide range, especially with stress levels today or, you know, bouncing off 2020 whenever the whole world went fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, I just don't follow the money. That's all I'm going to say. Follow the money. Yeah, well. will save the world. Go, Paul Stamets, one of like the, the leading uh, mycologists, actually has a, it's a TED talk or something like that on like, how mushrooms can save the world, or, or something along those lines. Uh, but go check out that he did. He's done two stints on Rogan, and he's been on a bunch of other podcasts. But uh, Paul Stamets is great. And then who's the guy that was on Ben Pakalski's show? Jeff Chilton. Yeah, yeah. Jeff yeah, Chilton's that's another that's super smart guy when it comes to mushrooms. Yeah, fucking legend. Just like an encyclopedia when it comes to like mushrooms, man. So yeah. good. Yep. Do you think Lucas that? the powdered mushrooms are going to be as good as getting the fresh mushrooms, or do you think they would be better since they're probably harvested at the optimal time and all we're missing from them is the water component? You know what? I think the fresh, the fresh are better. Yeah. That's, that's just, that's just my opinion, you know, and I, I'm thinking about like doing my own. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. that, it's not that hard. So especially with, uh, you know, with lion's mane and, uh, chaga, there won't be, there won't be that. They'll be easier to grow, like in your yeah. climate, I guess, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that won't be too hard. So I think that because you know you can buy in stores like uh, you know the the regular mushrooms, but that's not that's not that, that cool, you know. To be honest, plus they are not that. Yeah. It doesn't offer you know those kind of benefits that like Chinese mushrooms, the the, the medicinal that we talked about, you know, they, they offer. So yeah, but I, I'm I'm thinking about you know doing my own stuff. So who knows? Maybe when Shane will come, I will have like a my entire house will be in shrooms. <laughs> and what, what are you guys thoughts on on kratom or kratom? I haven't gone down the wormhole on that enough. Um, okay. I know it's got some positive benefits, like helping people get off pain meds and just overall like stress and relaxation stuff. But yeah. I've I've heard some things that it can also have some deleterious effects. Like it it could be addictive at certain things, but I. I don't want to speak out of turn because I don't know enough about it. I know it's something I probably need to, like Lucas and I were talking the other day, I need to start looking up some more about these research peptides, the BBC-157, uh, all of the other ones. TB-500, is that the other, another one? TB-500, yeah. 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 So, uh, all of those, I kind of need to go and check those out, and uh, Kratom is on that list as well. Um, I started I started taking right now BBC-157, but as far as Kratom... Yeah. I never had like any know, uh, plus, plus it's not available here in Europe at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's um I know what Mark Bell says of Mark has Bell. A, yeah, Mark Bell. Yeah. It's not cheap. MM. I love Kratom. It's easy to overdo though. It is addictive. Is it? Yeah, that's what I thought I had heard. You gotta be you gotta be curious if something's not available in Europe, especially Poland. <laughs> yeah man. <laughs> yeah. If something is not available here. <laughs> it's going to be good. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to see where the uh, Mind Bullet... All right, that was the name of his pro Mind product. Bullet. Mind Bullet, yeah. Are they still selling it, though? Are yeah, it's in, in capsules and in uh, liquid form. Okay, yeah, buy now. I just pulled up the website. Let me see. No, we are not sponsored in any way by uh, Mark Bell. Um, shout out. Shout out to Mark Bell. <laughs> shout out to Mark Bell. If he wants to sponsor the podcast... You know, be okay with that. Mind bullet potion bottles. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Something to delve into another wormhole. 
it's acts on opioid receptors, so it can be addictive in that regard. Good to know, MM. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Shridhar, is there a reason I can't find the supplement facts label for Assassin V7 on the Apollo site? I remember finding it from Instagram before I ordered and wonders why it's not on their website. Uh, probably just because they haven't uploaded the image to the website. And that's going to be uh, something that we need to... I'll talk to Carolina or Robbie and make sure it gets up on the website. Um, because I think there's one other product that... Uh, let me see. Shane uploaded it, right? Shane, you uploaded the... Yeah, I have it. Yeah. Yeah. No, not yeah. on the Apollon site. You gotta go to stacked and subscribe Twitter. to notifications. Twitter, you gotta you gotta click on the notifications on stack yeah. 3D and then you have it. Boom. Don't block like some dick on this podcast. <laughs> hey, at least I actually showed up to the podcast. I'm like another dick. Yeah, he probably accepts my notifications anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shridhar, go to the uh the stack three D website and uh it's here, I'll share it and we can uh What was that? Stacked 3D. There we go. How dare you? Stacked. With the industry a, leading a, source of news. It's <laughs> an E. It's an E. It's meant to be an E. Shane, so what is the genesis of that? And I don't know if it's ever been discussed. Why the three and not an E? Or was that just kind of a misprint? It was because it was taken. Site? Okay. I wanted stack.com and then it, and it was taken it was from some fucking restaurant and they were like i was like you know what i'll try it i said how much and they said 50 grand i was like you fucking kidding me of course not <laughs> and then jacked was big at the time and so i put a three yeah. but jacked was also meant to be with an e they, they, they the first run they did was with an e they told me mm-hmm I already got it from Stack TJ's review Instagram. Just found it weird. It's not up on site. Yeah, that could have that just been weird. a. Uh, they just forgot to put it on the, the site because when they're uploading images, they put different you know portions of the bottle and stuff like that. It's just something that slipped under the radar. Or because too busy with housewarming. That's yeah, why. Yeah, he's or, or, organized catering and mm. balloons and a petting he's zoo and everything like that. that. Uh, petting zoo. <laughs> Yeah, kids. Kids are coming. Obviously, I don't know what you do when you have a lot of money. I mean, wait. His daughter's seventeen, though. So how many? Do you think there's a bunch of little kids there? <laughs> Tiger slime. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like a Russian pity zoo. They have like <laughs> Siberian <laughs> tiger. Yeah, like panthers That's what and I said. wolves Tigers. and uh, like an exotic zoo. I don't know. He was recently well, laughing. He was recently laughing from uh, that Shane's gonna get like a uh, golden sink. So he's gonna probably get a fucking platinum sink or something like that. He probably that. has the golden toilet. He probably yeah, has the golden probably. toilet. My gold sink is almost finished. Yes. The kitchen is pretty much done. The, the little bench thing has to go in, and then the sink goes in. So it's the last thing, apparently. But, but honestly, the, the, I love your background for this week. Yeah, well, well I'll have see, back there. is that what that is? Well, we cleaned up the curtains that were here the other day because that was my kitchen. And I set up this table so that because uh, my daughter, her room's she got like Nikki made this activity center thingy for like drawing and stuff. And so she had no place to really put dolls and whatnot. And I said, like, you know what? Take the back corner. I'm not using it. <laughs> We don't, have a four, we don't have a four bedroom house. Yeah, yeah, bro. I even got her an office chair thingy. <laughs> she got everything down there. Man. Yeah. She's Clean like, lab. Yeah. Clean setup. That was that was meant to be where my energy drink fridge was gonna go. And I don't know how appropriate it is to put that beside my daughter. But I feel like it has its benefits because I'd be like, hey, bro, drink me. <laughs> and then she can just pass it up. Easy. You get 21, you're getting dad of the year 22 and 23 also. <laughs> she doesn't drink them. I, if you yeah. if you say to her, get energy, she'll go to the fridge. But now our fridge is like higher, so it's not going to work as well. But yeah. There we go. It's a nice background. It is. That's what I heard. 
She needs to clean the shit up, but yeah, that's all right. Uh, for listeners tuning in on live stream, this is going to be the last call for questions. As I was telling Sean uh, before we started the podcast, um, I've got to depart in a little bit because we're uh, we're hosting a little um, not not we're uh, hosting it, but we're going to. Happy, yeah, exactly. No, yeah, not a party for him. It's a um, there's a you're going to Rubix household. <laughs> yeah, I'm fly to Jersey real quick. Jay, do we do the invitation? We didn't get an invitation. Yeah. You know, no, no, I might have I might have flown over. Fuck these guys. Uh, Sandy's uh, landing on your front lawn. Yeah, once a month, uh, Sandy started orchestrating something for all the teachers at the high school that she teaches at. It's a K through twelve school, but there's not much interaction between like the high school teachers and the middle school teachers and the elementary school teachers. So she's trying to get all of them together. Um, and so we're everybody's getting there at four thirty. It's three o'clock my time right now for reference. Um, but we're going to go out there. We've got LSU colored tents, so everybody can obviously see like the purple and gold tents, and they'll be able to find us out there. But we're going to get out there for four o'clock, and it takes half an hour to get there. Plus, uh, I need to go wake up the halfling, get her dressed, um, and then we'll be out there drinking some fine bourbon and uh, other cocktails and beers and whatever else crosses our paths. It sounds like a lot of effort to socialize to me. I mean, like you people know. who like regularly hang out, go to like things where people get together. Yeah, it sounds it like a lot. It is. It yeah. can be. It can be a lot to do that. But I mean, after we get off the stream anyway, we'd probably be going out to one of these distilleries, just me, Sandy, and the halfling. So if it's going to be a bunch of other teachers oh. there, she's got other kids to play with where I can just kind of like sit and not be on the playground with her, then it's a win win. Yeah. So, Robert, so. you look at your daughter and just say, Bourbon me? Exactly. She knows, well, funny thing, I, I don't want this to be dominated with kids' stories, but so she's in the tub and she's got these little play foods. And so she's got like a slice of watermelon, a slice of apple. She's got a little orange in there too. And I walked in the thing. I said, Sophia, what are you doing? She says, I'm making an old fashioned. <laughs> she knows exactly what goes into it. Because <laughs> uh, she sees, like, she sees the two little cocktail cherries that I put in there. She sees the orange peel slice that I do in there and I muddle it and all that stuff. So, yeah. That's a, that is a father of the year and whenever she turns 21. There we go. Jojo, to see the ingredients list up, they told me to look at stack and discount subs and some others to see the ingredient list for Assassin. Okay, there you go. Maybe that's a little CYA measure on their part too, not listing the Sorry, no. on there. That could be a, an end around. I'll be it's a ploy so that people have to go to stack, subscribe so they can see the label. There you go. Or you forgot it, which is most likely the case. <laughs> I subscribe to the stack. Ah, yeah, there, see. Right? Love the nice summer. Thank you. Know. At least we have some kind people in this world. Speaking of subscription, I just got the notification right now on the plant-based protein from our friends. Oh, the the switch one. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah. Go. Looks good. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's been working on that for a while. Yeah. 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 Jiffy Jank, willing to drop some Massive Iron Supplements? Yes, there is no more Massive Iron Supplements. It is, uh, go back and see episode 51 of The Final Scoop, and that will give you the entire uh, story of what went down. But thank you for the question, Jiffy Jank. If you got anything else, feel free to post it up. Episode Bro, 51. You, you remember that? You remember? Mm -hmm. Well, I've, I've gotten a bunch of comments. Like, at least one time a week, there's been comments like saying, hey, why did you disappear? What happened? I'm thinking, I haven't disappeared. Been around for, for quite a while. Why did you disappear? What happened? Huh? Yeah, exactly. I just I disappeared. I, I came up out of nowhere. I just popped up out of the ground again. I went into a hole and I came out. Never disappeared. Although that's the way it's portrayed. However, uh, I mean, false, maybe if you off, if you offered some some notification subscriptions <laughs> and stuff like that, maybe. Well, here, here's an easy thing for all the consumers to do. hit the notification bell if you're watching on YouTube. That way, when I post these things, because I usually I put the announcement for the podcast. Like I'll I'll structure it and so it's hey. One o'clock, that's coming out. Four o'clock is the next podcast or something like that. So if you hit this notification bell on YouTube, it'll tell you when there's a new live event coming, a new podcast dropping and all of that stuff. Is there anything next year where we will all be in the same place? In 2022? Well, you it's mean not going to be this year. No, not this but year. I mean, we'll be on like the Zeta variant of that unspecified virus of unknown origins to where the, the world's still going to be all hysterical. I mean... I'm planning on, on traveling come February. I'll be extremely disappointed if I went two years without going anywhere <laughs> and then that was canceled. Yeah. 
So, so we're planning for February, but I was like, because I'm going to Poland for yeah. a few months. And I know Robert said he'll be going to Europe. And then I was like, ooh, we might all collide in the one place for My a half hour for a half hour gym session. There you go. So you guys gonna have issues for the Apollon convert thing then? Shane and, and Lucas? Oh, I'm not going, I can't. Okay. I wanted to, but uh, if we fly back I have to quarantine in a hotel for five grand. Jesus. And then it's a thousand, I think, extra if, if it's my wife or anyone else with me. So I was like, no, Shit. let's just let's just let's just skip that and do everything next year. Yeah, that's the for plan. me. Bullshit. Unclear topic right now. Uh, as far I don't want to s- say anything more about the cause of the pandemic shit and so on, but we shall see. Yeah. Um, so far I I really don't know. I can tell. Yeah, I want to come. Yeah, that's what I can tell you, man. Uh, closing word on this, Jiffy Jank, there is a lot of cool stuff, not related to Massive Iron, but there's some stuff with Apollon. Uh, I've got some things I'm working on with Condemned Labs. Uh, Rob's coming out with the best new tropic ever. That's with the Condemned Labs one. Brooke has run uh, seven servings of that. Um, and there's uh, two other brands, but I, I signed an NDA at this point, so I can't really name anything that I'm working on with them like, or the actual companies, but uh, yeah. They'll, they'll be, they'll, I'll find us a way to drop a subtle hint or so. Um, Robert Biden already got rid of the number 19 calls. Clearly his mental fortitude and cunning intellect calls up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friends, I need to skadoodle. Uh, thank you for your time for the listeners tuning in on the live stream. We appreciate it. Uh, if you have any other comments, questions, if you're catching us on replay, uh, we didn't get to anything, or uh, you have any other future topics of conversation, shoot me an email to supplementengineer at gmail.com or leave a comment down below. Um, my friends, thank sign you, up Sean. For, uh, sign up for notifications sign up for at Stack. Yeah. yeah, sign up for notifications yeah. at stack3d.com. Sean, thank you for filling in and being yeah, a, a superior co host to Robert Samborski. We appreciate it. Thanks, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Do you want to do any shameless plug-in of anything, Sean? Uh, No, I have a uh, YouTube podcast as well, Sub Talk Radio. You know, I try to do every Sunday myself, cast the characters, guests, and uh, come on over. Love to see some some of the same people here. Outstanding. All right, my friends. Thank you. Thank you for the listeners tuning in, and uh, we will catch you next time on the final scoop. See you. Thank you, everybody.